There are an estimated 270 million cell phone users in the United States, about 4 billion worldwide. I would venture to guess that almost everyone in this room uses a cell phone on a regular basis. And most of us don't give a second's thought that it could harm us in any way. However, a growing number of experts think there is cause for concern. Indeed, some international studies have suggested that people who use cell phones for more than 10 years are more likely to get tumors on the side of the head where they usually hold their phone. I hope today's hearing will begin to address that question. Our first witness is Dr. John Booker, Associate Director of the National Toxicology Program, a cooperative effort between the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, the CDCP, and the FDA to coordinate toxicological testing programs in the Department of Health and Human Services. <laughs> Dr. Booker, welcome to the committee and please proceed. Thank you. As you mentioned in your opening remarks, there's only been 10 or, 10 or 12 years of exposure to these agents and, and it's increasing dramatically. Um, and there have been some hints recently that, that there is an increase in brain cancers in, in uh, people who have used these uh, cellular communication devices for a number of years. What are the considerations with respect to an additional potential risk for children using cell phones? Children have a uh, configuration of their skull that does allow uh, penetration of cell phone radiation deeper. Are you saying tissue. there's a potentially greater risk? I'm, I'm saying there potentially is a greater risk. And, and what, uh, what uh, limitations, if any, then, uh, if any parents are watching this on C-SPAN, what should they do? I wish I had a good answer to that. I think the... Well, would there be a precautionary approach? How about the use of uh, uh, earphones to minimize risk? I think that's a good idea. If they can do this, they would be better to have some kind of device like this. As I understand it, yes. Uh, why hasn't there been uh, done uh, so far, uh, more been done here in the United States to look at the epidemiology of brain cancer among cell phone users? And why aren't we uh, a part of the interphone collaboration? Well, Senator, um, my understanding is that we do, in fact, NCI does support part of the Interphone study. The Interphone study is a large study in 13 different countries that is supported by or is uh, being coordinated by the World Health Organization. Thank you very much for your testimony. Uh, Dr. Sedetsky. I'm currently engaged in collaborative studies of brain cancer funded among others by the NIH and the European community. For over 10 years, I have been participating in research on the risk of tumors associated with cell phones, initially as the principal investigator of the Israeli part of the Interphone study, the largest collaborative study conducted today on this issue. And currently, I lead the Israeli team of another study, also funded by the EU, uh, on cell phones and children called Moby Kids. In 2008, we published findings from the Israeli finding of the Interphone study suggesting a risk of salivary gland, are located right here, salivary gland tumors among people who used cell phones for relatively long periods uh, when phone was usually held on the same side of the head where the tumor developed and when use was relatively heavy. It is my hope that the issue raised in this hearing will encourage you to promote research and take actions to ensure the safe and responsible use of cell phones. I would like to thank Dr. Deborah Davis, uh, who invited me here, and I would like to thank you for your attention and for raising this issue. Dr. Sadesky, thank you very much for coming a great distance, and thank you for your testimony. Dr. Davis, you said in your testimony, again, following up on this, is that you said that Interphone has studied people who use phones heavily for a decade, has found that where persons have used phones heavily for a decade or longer, there is evidence of significantly increased risk, literally a doubled risk of malignant brain tumors. The one researcher to have studied young people who began using cell phones as teenagers, Professor Leonard Hardell of Sweden, has found that those who started to use cell phones heavily before age 20 have four to six times more brain tumors by the time they reach their 30s. Um, can we get some documentation on that study? Um, absolutely. In fact, 
I want to also tell you, unfortunately, that there has been a history here that I think we need to recognize. When Professor Henry Lai and Singh developed the pioneering new technique for measuring DNA damage called the comet assay that shows you a tail of DNA when it's damaged. When they developed that assay in 1994, they showed that radio frequency exposure to brain cells of the rat could be damaging in terms of the comet assay. The industry response, which has been documented and is in my book as well as other places, was this. First, they went to NIH and tried to get their funding revoked. Then. They went to the journal that had accepted the article for publication. Who, and who, tried, who are they? The industry working against seeing this work published. Then the same lobbyists tried to get the article unaccepted in a journal where it had been accepted. And finally, they hired other scientists to do advocacy research to try to invalidate the science. And when those scientists actually confirmed the work, it was never published. What is the strongest evidence you have that exposure to a cell phone causes cancer. The work that's been done on the comet assay that shows double strand breaks in DNA after exposure to cell phone radiation is very strong evidence experimentally. If we tie that with the human studies of Dr. Sudetsky and others that have looked at people who have 10 years of exposure or more, we put that together and we have strong evidence. <sighs> Well, Dr. Sadetsky has testified that you see something after 10 years. Is that an accurate statement, Dr. Sadetsky? Regarding the 10 years, yes. But what worried me was that in my study, I saw consistent positive results, and they always appeared where where there is biological plausibility. They did not appear in this group or in that group. They appeared in the more than 10 years. They appeared on the same side where the, where the phone was held. They appeared uh, for the heavy users, and they appeared in rural areas compared to urban areas. And this also has biological plausibility because where antenna is more dense, then the exposure is lower. So the fact that all of these indications appeared where they should have appeared uh, told me that it was, it was a really red light. Dr. Davis, you said that, it, that a cell phone should not be kept any closer than an inch to your body, is that what you said? I don't know where that, where does that come from? Uh, that actually comes from the BlackBerry manual as well as from the iPhone manual. If you read the manuals, which almost none of us does, that is what they say. So by calling for warning labels as I am, I am simply calling to codify what the industry is currently telling us uh, about cell phones. Dr. Nedenko. Dr. Nedenko. Last week, EWG released the results of a 10-month investigation of more than 200 peer-reviewed studies, government advisories, and industry documents on the safety of cell phone radiation. We found that the studies published during the first two decades of cell phone use produced conflicting results and few definitive conclusions on cell phone safety. But the latest research in which scientists are for the first time able to study people who have used cell phones for many years suggests the potential for serious safety issues. Until the science on cell phone risks is settled, EWG recommends a number of simple actions consumers can take to reduce exposures to cell phone radiation, including use a low radiation phone, use a headset or a speakerphone, choose texting over talking, and limit children's cell phone use. In conclusion, EWG strongly believes that the government should support additional research into this important health question, and that the public has a right to know what levels of radiation they may be exposed to, what may be the potential risks, and what precautionary measures consumers can take to protect themselves and their families from any adverse health effects of cell phone radiation. Thank you for your time. Did you have something you wanted to add to that, Dr. Sadesky? I didn't know. I thought you were signaling me. Did you want to? Just two minor points. The first is that in Israel it is obligatory by law to have the specific absorption rate on every phone that is in the market. You're doing that now? Or yes, you? already for th four years now. Senator Spector, I think you want to add before we... Well, I have a final comment. See what the... See what the Senate can do on a Monday afternoon if a couple of senators are in town. <laughs> <laughs>